Yep. Uh, the Journal is out with a new piece this morning titled, Kevin McCarthy's ouster could imperil Republican House seats in 2024. Uh, writing this, fierce Republican infighting has sparked GOP concerns that voters could be turned off by the constant turmoil, particularly if it cripples U.S. efforts <clears throat> to help Israel uh, and, and Israel respond to an attack by Hamas or leads to a government shutdown in November if no funding deal is reached with Democrats, Newt. So what is the ramifications of this? The fact that you can have one person uh, get eight, you know, seven others to team up with all of the Democrats to take out the Speaker of the House, even as you say, he got the bulk of the vote, 96 percent. Well, clearly, a, a, a majority of the conference now wants to change that rule. They've seen how one bitter person uh, could, can, can use that to cause total chaos. And I would not be at all surprised to see that rule change. Uh, Nancy Pelosi didn't have it at all when she was speaker. There was, you couldn't move to vacate the chair unless you were the opposition leader. So uh, I, I think you're likely to see a tightening up of that. I think what was done by the eight people who betrayed their conference was totally unthinkable and unacceptable. And I think we ought to be honest about it. that's what they did. They sided with the Democrats to cause chaos. Uh, and they're basically anarchists, as Mark Levin said. They're not conservatives. Uh, they're for anarchy. Uh, right. We have to have an ability to govern ourselves. The world is very dangerous and getting more dangerous, and we need a functioning, effective constitutional government. Yeah, very dangerous due to failed policy from a sitting president and his administration. You write an excellent op-ed on what needs to be done now in terms of Hamas, and you write, they need to be destroyed utterly, Newt. Tell us how. Well, I, th I think, and I don't know that the Israelis are, are prepared to do this, but I think what they should do is occupy Gaza, root out, just as we did at, with Nazi Germany, we arrested 400,000 Germans in the year after World War II. Every single one of them was vetted. Uh, the ones who we found to be active Nazis were, in fact, locked up. Uh, and I think they've got to go through, destroy Hamas, find a way to build a replacement government, uh, and uh, make clear to the people of Gaza that they have two futures. They have a future of pretty good prosperity uh, if they are willing to live in peace with their neighbor, and they have a future of absolute total misery, no electricity, uh, no jobs, no opportunities, and continuous fighting uh, if, they dis if they are going to support Hamas. But Hamas yeah, has I proven mean... you can't live next to a neighbor who says uh, not a single Jew will remain. I mean, this is not a negotiating position. This is what yeah. Hamas is about. And I think, therefore, right. it has to be destroyed as an organization. Well, I mean, you make so many important points. I want to get right to the story now. Let's get to Greg Palcott. He is live this morning in Israel. Stay with Thank us, you, Newt. Again. want to get your reaction. But uh, the uh, Israeli Defense Force has posted on X that sirens are being heard in Tel Aviv and across Israel right now, warning of possible incoming rockets. Here's senior foreign affairs correspondent Greg Palcott on the ground. Greg. Hey, Maria. Yeah, we've been talking all morning, but this story uh, changes about every 15 minutes. Though, here's a few of the latest updates we have for you. Number one, that rocket barrage. The sirens have been uh, ringing out in Tel Aviv, around the airport, Ben Gurion International Airport, serving all of Israel uh, and other parts of central uh, Israel. This due to a rocket barrage coming from the Hamas uh, arsenal, just about a mile and a half away from us in. Gaza Strip. That's point one. Point two, the IDF says that they have hit about 250 targets today in the Gaza Strip. They call it the Hamas infrastructure headquarters and service areas for the militants and their activity. We, from the ground here, have been hearing those planes going across all the time, and we have been hearing the rockets coming back. The latest, just about five, just about 25 minutes ago, five rockets coming from Gaza Strip and being hit by the Iron Dome over here in this area. The next bit of information we have is that uh, John Kirby, the national security uh, 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 spokesperson, saying that U.S. military aid has come in, is coming in in one shipment, and more is expected. And one last bit of new information, we're here in Zutterot. That's right above, again, about a mile, mile and a half north of the, uh, the east of the, the Gaza Strip border, just on the other side of this town. The Israeli military uh, uh, freed a kibbutz, basically, 
basically regain control on the ground of a kibbutz that was taken over by Hamas. Remember, we are in day four of this war, and this was the first day that they could uh, show, indicate to the outside world that this, too, was under control. Now they say this ha they had this whole area. And the last thing that we've been seeing, Maria, is uh, tanks and tanks and tanks building up for a possible incursion, uh, an incursion that has to be done very carefully, along with all the dead and injured we've been talking about. We have, of course, been talking about those 150-odd hostages inside Gaza. Maria. All right, Greg, thanks very much. Stay safe. Greg Palkett this morning in Israel. I am talking with Newt Gingrich this morning. And, Newt, you just saw the realities on the ground from Greg Palkett. These pictures are really hard to look at that have been circulating online of these monster terrorists snatching kids, uh, little girls, women and children, holding them hostage. How do you think the U.S. should be responding right now? Uh, given these atrocities um, and, and this threat from Hamas that if there is another rocket fired from Israel into Gaza that is unannounced without a warning that they will start executing those hostages? Well, look, I think there are three things we could do immediately. <clears throat> First, uh, Biden could seize the $6 billion that he'd given to Iran, which is sitting in a bank in Gutter. Uh, and they should seize that. I personally wish they would seize it and turn it over to Israel so that Iran could actually pay for rebuilding the damage which Iranian proxies have done. But this morning, they should seize that $6 billion. Second, they ought to put B-2s over northern, over southern Lebanon. They should send a clear signal to Hezbollah that if Hezbollah attacks Israel, the United States will take out Hezbollah targets, and we have the capability to do it. And, we'll, and I think that would be a very important step in protecting Israel from a second front. Third, we should be looking through our inventory. The Israelis have got to have the same ability to fight inside urban areas that they have with the Iron Dome. We have not invested in the kind of technologies we should, for example, to have robots that are capable of fighting inside the tunnels. And the Israelis are very worried both about the hostages, but also about the kind of casualties that in traditional World War II style urban warfare are inevitable. We've got to find ways to be able to use artificial intelligence, robotics, and other things to be able to grind them down. But I, I, I can't say this too strongly. Hamas has proven to the world that they are barbarians, that they are vicious, that they violate every rule of law. When, when you seize a woman who was a survivor of the Holocaust and now as a grandmother, she's now been, been captured by Hamas. Can you imagine a life as a child uh. surviving the Nazis, only to end your life with Hamas? Um, these people are barbarians. They should be treated as barbarians. Hamas has to be destroyed. The people of, Libya, of Gaza have to be liberated and given an opportunity to have a government willing to live in peace and prosperity. And, and, and yet, we have this administration being on an appeasement strategy from day one. Uh, even, even up until this war well, started, Anthony Blinken was on the Sunday show saying he can't confirm that Iran is even behind this, despite the fact that we've heard from umpteen times from lawmaker after lawmaker, as well as breaking news and an exclusive from the Wall Street Journal, who had so many sources with specific dates of how they worked with Hamas to plan this. Here's Anthony Blinken on Sunday. Watch this. In this moment, we don't have um, anything that uh, shows us that Iran was directly involved in this attack and in planning it or in carrying it out, but that's something we're looking at very carefully, and we've got to see where the facts lead. But we do know uh, that Iran's had a long relationship with Hamas. Newt, they are on defending their policy strategy right now. They're defending that $6 billion. They don't <laughs> even want to go there. Look, there may be a scandal exploding that is as big as the Alger Hiss scandal during the communist era in the late 1940s. The FBI is apparently investigating the top Biden-Obama negotiator uh, for basically being an agent of Iran. Now, if that turns right. out to be true, and that was certainly articles this morning, that their top negotiator may have basically been in collusion with the Iranian dictatorship. Uh, I mean, you can't imagine how bad this administration is in dealing with the real world. Uh, they've lost in Afghanistan. They've mishandled Ukraine. Uh, they sat idly by. They've now admitted 
They gave money to the Palestinians that probably went to Hamas. Uh, they, there's an estimate that the Iranians may have gained $150 billion from a variety of things the Biden administration has done. This is madness. Yeah. Uh, and this is an administration which I think is totally out of touch with reality. And here's how the New York Post writes it this morning, Newt. The Biden administration's former special envoy to Iran, who was placed on leave earlier this year for allegedly mishandling classified material, should face extensive scrutiny for his permissive stance toward the Tehran regime after it aided Hamas and Hezbollah carrying out terrorism against Israel. This, this happening yesterday, but there's been suspicion uh, around uh, Rob Maley for several months now. Right. I mean, so, so you have an Iranian dictatorship dedicated to the destruction of both Israel and the United States, uh, which has penetrated the American government. You have a Biden administration so unwilling to be honest about reality uh, that they're sitting around prattling about things that are nonsense. And you have them refusing to take active steps. I just outlined several clear steps they could take. Now, if they were to seize the $6 billion, which they could today in gutter, that's sitting there, uh, that would be a real signal that would cause Iran real pain. If they were to put B-2s over southern Lebanon and indicate clearly in an open message to Hezbollah that if Hezbollah tries to launch a second front, that front will be bombed by the Americans with very sophisticated weapons, and we have a capacity in our strategic bombing capabilities uh, and with the Tomahawk missiles that are now offshore, I think there are an estimated 800 Tomahawk cruise missiles available to uh, hit them if we had to. We just need to—we want to say we, we want to sanitize the northern border, make sure there's no threat to Israel from the north, and then we want to, frankly, give the Israelis every sophisticated capability we have to fight in yeah. an urban environment, to minimize Israeli casualties, and to maximize our ability to find the hostages and rescue them. Uh, and this is just one more point, Jerry Baker, one more signal of an America breakdown, as you so eloquently write in your latest book. Yeah, and I can look, as, as uh, Newt Gingrich says, this is a terrible, cat catastrophic failure of U.S. policy, particularly over the last few years, this appeasement of Iran, uh, this attempt to... Uh, hoodwink, really, the American people and, indeed, the rest of the world into the idea that somehow the United States has not been appeasing Iran and helping Iran leads to a lack of trust. Uh, and this is a, you know, we're going to see this catastrophic lack of trust that we see in all of our institutions in this country, is what I've written about in my new book. Um, and this is why you see it, because you have an administration, you have political leaders who don't tell the truth, who, who follow these policies that they want to follow for reasons that actually, you know, th this case is very hard to understand, and then they deny it, and then they, they, they lie to the American people, and we don't have a culture of trust in this country, and that ultimately is ruinous. Newt, is there any way to change that? Sure. I mean, in the long run, yes. The Congress should next week pass by overwhelming majorities a series of, of, of laws and be prepared to override Biden's veto. They should cut off all aid to the Palestinian uh, in, in Gaza. They should, they should cut off all activities with Iran. They should re-seize the $6 billion. They should move to provide Israel with every advanced technology. We have a lot of things uh, that are in development at places like DARPA, and we, should, we need to focus as much on defeating the urban enemy as we focus on defeating satellites and missiles. And I think if we did that, uh, we would very rapidly have an amazing dominance in places like Gaza. But until we're prepared to say Hamas must be defeated and then destroyed, and a new yeah. post-Hamas government has to be created, until we're prepared to do that, we don't have a strategy for victory. Well, I mean, Jerry Baker, I don't think we're going to hear that from President Biden at all today. I mean, the president's going to make a statement on these attacks later today at 1 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> I spoke with Secretary Mike Pompeo, and he said, I want to hear from Joe Biden why he permitted these atrocities and why he has been appeasing the Iranians, knowing that they're behind the terrorist organizations. Look, as I said at the beginning, Maria, Israel has got to be given the space and the opportunity to carry out this enormously important mission of destroying Hamas. There's going to be tremendous pressure with every single bomb that's dropped. We're going to hear from the media about how this is disproportionate, about how Israel is doing the wrong thing. They've got to be given the opportunity to pursue that. We've got to allow them to, to, to do what is right for their country and, indeed, what yeah. ultimately is right for the region and the world.
Real quick, real quick, uh, Newt, what can Joe Biden say to create calm here? I just described it. Joe Biden can say, we're totally committed to the survival of Israel. We're totally committed to the destruction of uh, yep. Hamas. We recognize now that Iran is a terror state. We are seizing the $6 billion during my speech, and we are okay. launching B-2s uh, to go over Hezbollah. I mean, these are Newt, very, you know, it's not complicated. It's just yeah, hard. Yeah, it's not complicated. Newt Gingrich, thank you so much. Jerry Baker, Joe Pinion, thank you.